What's going on everyone? My name is Evan Jemnikar and I'm the Daily Dino Guy. Today, we're diving into the world of the most extreme dinosaurs that roamed our planet. From icy forests to volcanic plains, these dinosaurs weren't just survivors. They were the ultimate adapters to their extreme environments. So let me know in the comments which of these extreme dinosaurs you think is your favorite. Our first extreme dinosaur is Lelinosaura, which was a small plant-eating dinosaur that lived in Australia during the early Cretaceous period. Now, when you think of dinosaurs, you probably imagine them living in hot, humid places, right? Well, Lelinosaura was unique in that it lived in an environment that endured months of darkness and freezing temperatures. 118 million years ago, Australia was actually much closer to the South Pole and was connected to Antarctica. Even with global temperatures higher than today, this whole landmass would have experienced brutal winters. Some estimates suggest that Australian winters would have been about 3 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 16 degrees Celsius. That was way colder than Australia nowadays. Lelinosaura was about 10 feet long, with a small body and a long tail. Its large eyes suggest that it had excellent night vision, a crucial adaptation for surviving the long winters without much sunlight. Now you might be wondering if Lelinosaura hibernated like modern Arctic animals. One study actually looked at the growth of several dinosaurs that lived in the Arctic Circle. They found that larger dinosaurs stopped growing during the winters, which suggests that they probably hibernated. But smaller dinosaurs continued to grow through the winters. So it may have been that Lelinosaurus was able to survive winters without hibernating. But life in the polar regions wasn't just about surviving the cold. Lelinosaurus had to avoid being prey for two larger predators. First would have been the predatory dinosaurs known as the Megaraptors. These dinosaurs actually weren't related to raptors. Instead, these dinosaurs would have been about 20 feet long, or 5 meters, and they would have sported massive hooked claws. These claws were perfectly adapted for snatching up smaller dinosaurs like Lelinosaurus. The second wasn't actually a dinosaur at all, but a giant amphibian called Kulusuchus. Kulusuchus was essentially the size of a crocodile, at 10 feet or 3 meters long. It would have patrolled the lakes and rivers of ancient Australia, eating up smaller mammals or smaller dinosaurs. Its nearly three foot or one meter wide skull would have easily been able to snatch up a Lelinosaurus if it got too close. But despite these challenges, Lelinosaurus was able to leave an incredible mark on the prehistoric life of Australia, surviving where most other dinosaurs could not. Next on our list is Isosaurus, which was a long-necked dinosaur that lived in what is now India during the late Cretaceous period. Standing at nearly 60 feet tall, Isosaurus would have been one of the biggest dinosaurs in its environment. But what makes Isosaurus truly unique was the environment that it called home. Isosaurus lived during an intense time of volcanic activity called the Deccan Traps. These volcanic eruptions were some of the largest ever recorded, measuring over 200,000 square miles or half a million square kilometers. And it wasn't just one eruption. These eruptions lasted for over 300,000 years. The Deccan Traps were one of the most extreme periods of climate change in Earth's history. In fact, they were originally thought to be what led to the extinction of dinosaurs. These eruptions would have created an extremely hostile environment, but Isosaurus managed to survive. Despite this, Isosaurus would have feasted from the vegetation that grew from the volcanic soil. As if life wasn't hard enough, Isosaurus also shared its environment with many other predatory dinosaurs. These dinosaurs, Rajasaurus, Indosuchus, and Rachiolisaurus, were abelosaurs. Abelosaurs were known for their stumpy arms, but their massive leg and tail muscles that would have provided them with explosive speed. As one of the last dinosaurs to walk the earth, Isosaurus represents a final chapter in the age of dinosaurs, a testament to the resilience of life in the face of adversity. Our journey through extreme dinosaurs now takes us to the late Triassic period. Here, we meet Coelophysis, a slender, carnivorous dinosaur that lived in the American Southwest. Measuring about 10 feet long, Coelophysis wasn't the biggest or the most powerful dinosaur. In fact, it lived at a time before dinosaurs ruled the Earth. Coelophysis would have competed with Postosuchus, a giant two-legged ancestor of crocodiles and alligators. Postosuchus wasn't as quick or agile as dinosaurs, but it was undoubtedly the apex predator thanks to its powerful jaw muscles, its sharp vision, and its keen sense of smell. But what Coelophysis lacked in size, it made up for in survival skills, as it was the master of adaptation. It lived in an environment that experienced intense droughts and extreme flooding, a landscape that was constantly changing. It also lived through the impact of a three-mile-wide asteroid that hit Quebec, Canada, known as the Manicouagan Impactor. To survive these perilous times, Coelophysis hunted in packs, and it would have targeted early mammals and small reptiles. 
Its unique hip structure allowed it to move faster than most of the other animals in its environment while also conserving energy. These features gave it a competitive advantage in a world where tomorrow was not guaranteed. Its ability to thrive in such harsh and unpredictable environments makes it one of the most extreme dinosaurs. Finally, we come to Eustreptospondylus, which was a carnivorous dinosaur that lived in Europe during the Middle Jurassic. What makes Eustreptospondylus so unique is its extreme environment. Sea level was much higher than today, which would have transformed Europe into a chain of islands. These islands would have been similar to the Galapagos today. Without much land to hunt on, Eustreptospondylus had to swim between islands to find prey. Measuring about 15 feet long, Eustreptospondylus was a dominant land predator. But it had to be cautious when venturing into the waters, as the oceans were home to giant predators. The biggest would have been Leedsichthys, a giant fish measuring 54 feet or 16.5 meters. This fish could have easily swallowed Eustreptospondylus whole. Besides these massive fish, the seaways of Europe were also filled with the long-necked plesiosaurs and the short-necked pliosaurs. It's hypothesized that the long-necked plesiosaurs would have lied in wait for their prey. As its slow-moving prey would approach, it would quickly close the distance with its long neck. The pliosaurs, on the other hand, were built for speed. These reptiles would have been the apex predators of the oceans, and they would have been able to chase down just about anything in the water, especially a slow-moving dinosaur. But that's not all. The oceans also would have been home to a unique type of aquatic crocodile called the Thalatosuchians. These crocodiles developed flippers, paddle-like tails, and they would have been about the size of sharks. So, as you can see, you wouldn't have wanted to go anywhere near the oceans of ancient Europe. But despite all these sea monsters, Eustreptospondylus was still able to navigate this complex island environment. This intrepid lifestyle made it one of the most adaptable and extreme dinosaurs of its time. These four dinosaurs, Lelinosaura, Isosaurus, Coelophysis, and Eustreptospondylus, just show how adaptable dinosaurs were. Each of these dinosaurs faced unique challenges in their environment. From freezing polar darkness to volcanic eruptions, they all found a way to survive. It's a reminder of how incredibly resilient life is, even in the most extreme conditions. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a prehistoric adventure. And don't forget to check out Daily Dino Guy on Instagram and Facebook for even more fascinating dinosaur facts. Until next time, keep exploring the ancient past with me, Daily Dino Guy.